I think it's been the it's been a while since the last time I gave a talk here in the branch. And uh, sabi ni ni Louie kanina, every time he talks to me, parang gusto niyang mangarap. Ako rin may pangarap. And isa sa mga pangarap ko ay sana may experience ko ulit ano yung feeling ng nagsusuklay. <laughs> Nakalimutan ko na. <laughs> And yung isang pangarap ko na sana makapagbigay ulit ako ng talk. <laughs> no, actually, I was the one who volunteered. She was asking, bro, sino yung speaker natin? Nahiya pa ako eh, sito. <laughs> Buti naman sumayag si She. Well, let me start off by reading a, a, a passage from the scriptures. It's taken from Quran. Uh, from the, the Bible, from the Gospel according to St. Luke. And in chapter 5, early on, the verse I think started with verse 4. Jesus at this time, as, as Luke would narrate the story, was already a big name. Sikat na si Jesus dito, and everybody would come to him even from far away towns and places they would come to Jesus and hear him listen to his stories and this time in verse 4 Jesus started to talk to them in parables and then he said one day a sower was sowing his seed and as he was sowing hindi to yung tatahiya so Some seeds fell on the path. They were trodden underfoot. The birds of the air devoured them. Some seeds fell on rocky grounds. They grew up a little bit. But because there was no moisture on the ground, they withered away. Some fell on thorns. The weeds with thorns grew with the seeds. And at some point, It choked the seed. But some seeds fell on good soil. And the seed grew healthy and bare much fruit. And the disciples asked them, asked him, What's the meaning of this parable, Master? And then Jesus said, You know, some wouldn't be able to understand this, but you as my disciples are going to explain it to you. The seed is the word of God. Those seeds, the Word of God, fell on, on the past. These are the words that were taken away by the devil. Didn't even have the chance to grow. But those seeds that fell on rocky ground, they grew a little bit. These were the words that were taken by the people, so excited. And then, after some time, because of temptations, They didn't follow the word. But the words that fell on thorny places, these are the words that grew in the heart of men, but then because of the many cares of this life, work, deadlines, quotas, hindi naman sinabi ni Jesus yan. They soon forgot about the word. But the word that fell on good soil, good hearts. They were the ones that were taken and the people who took them persisted. They persisted and it bear much food. These seeds that fell in good soil stand for those who hear the message and retain it in good and obedient heart and they pursue it until they bear fruit. God would speak to these people. And then as he speaks to his people, some would say, Yes, Lord, whatever you're going to say, I'm going to do it. Even before you tell me what it is, I'm going to do it. I will obey. It's almost like it's a yes. Kami sa bisan yung yes natin natatagal na Yes. But these people actually have a, a, a different kind of perspective when they say yes. They, 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 their yes is, Lord, whatever, whenever, however, whatever you're going to tell me, 
Kahit kailan mo sasabihin, even before you tell it to me, my answer is yes. The default answer is yes. And you know, while I was reflecting on, on these words and looking into my life and examining how I lived out those words, I would tend to agree what the pastor in Saddleback Church says. His name is Rick Warren. He's, he's a famous writer. You know, he says, many scholars would think that this parable represents the four different kinds of people. But to him, and I think to me too, this parable, this story, represents four kinds of attitude. What we're talking about here is actually the attitude. This kind of attitude, Lord, I will persist. I will retain it in my heart. I will obey what you, were, what you will tell me. Attitudes are very, very important. And you know, these four different attitudes can actually happen to us at, on the same day. One moment, we would say, Lord, huwag mo nang sabihin yung gusto mong sabihin. Alam ko na yan, hindi ko rin papakinggan yan. Takbo tayo. Meron namang iba na sabihin natin, Lord, tell me right now. And alam niyo parang lingas kugon, excited na excited talaga. And after a while, after some time, the excitement wears out. Excitement turns into youthful zeal. But after being tired, forget it. And sometimes we also would think, that, Lord, I really want to follow you. I made a decision to do this. I made a decision to pray every day. But then with busy days, when for, for the students, they would the hell days. And they would soon forget about what they said to the Lord, what they promised. The cares of their lives would choke their promise and their yes to God. But to most of us, we also would desire to, to make our yes something that's considered as a default. You know, pag naka eyeglasses ako parang si Buya Bunda. <laughs> pag naka shades naman parang si Vin Diesel. <laughs> Mahirap, I, I wouldn't be able to see you. <clears throat> pag walang shades, walang eyeglasses, nakaputing t-shirt, parang si Mr. Clean lang. <laughs> But I, I do believe that we desire this. That our default will be yes. And that's hard. That's really hard. Our yes, the, the, the yes that we gave to the Lord a few years ago, it will be tested every day of our lives. And we need to always say yes. And how I wish, this is my prayer, that even before I know what the Lord will tell me, my answer is already yes. Yes, Lord. Whatever, whenever, however. I am speaking about our yes because today, at least tonight, we will recognize a sister who said yes to the Lord. Yes. <laughs> and I would like to talk about a particular woman, not yet our sister. Her name is Rahab. Do you know who Rahab is? Yes. He's what? A prostitute. If you want to read about her life, you can read it in Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. But for those who haven't met Rahab, I'm going to tell you her story. To summarize her story, this prostitute, Rahab, was the one chosen by God. And she said, yes. That's it. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> Rahab was a cat from, from Canaan. And he's a Canaanite woman. And during the time of Joshua, they were actually seeing Jericho, the city they will conquer. Canaan was the promised land. 
Actually, I was reminded with this story. I was having a Bible study with few of the brothers in the household. And when I was preparing for this talk, I remember Rahab. Yeah, we talked about it in our Bible study. And Joshua was a young leader. So eager to conquer, to claim the land that was promised to them by the Lord. But then this land were filled with giants. Although it was true that this land was indeed a land filled with milk and honey. But this land was also occupied by giants. And they were so afraid. So in order for them to defeat the enemy, Joshua decided to send two spies. Garlic and onion. <laughs> Two spies. <laughs> Where's your commitment, brothers? <laughs> I'm requiring that right now. <laughs> so Joshua sent these two spies, and then some of the people actually learned that two men entered the city. And so they were looking for these two men, but then Rahab, the prostitute, hit both of these men. And then after some time, she asked him to escape. And then she said, when you conquer us, we know who you are. We have heard your story when you left Egypt. You have defeated a lot of enemies, and I'm sure you're going to defeat us. But I know that God, your God, wants me to save you. So by the time you're going to conquer us, can you spare my family? And true enough, when they conquered Canaan, when they conquered Jericho, the Israelites spared the family of Rahab. And Rahab married one of the sons of Judah, a man from the tribe of Judah. And their sons were the sons who became kings. And Rahab was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Because she said yes, she was used by God. Rahab could have said, I'm not worthy. You ask me, Lord, to save Israelites. You're going to use me. I'm not worthy. Use her. She goes to Mass every Sunday. She prays the Rosary every day. Me, I spend my time on my iPad. She spends her time serving her family, her husband. I serve many men. They're good, they're better. This woman only have one wife. I have 825 men. She's better. But try this. St. Paul says, God chooses the weak to shame the strong. That's how it works. I don't know if you remember the story of Gideon. Gideon came from a weakest tribe, Benjamin. A Benjamite. But then God used Gideon. They were supposed to conquer, they were supposed to defeat an army, but then God only used 300 of them. Ito pa yung mga uneducated, but they were able to defeat the enemy even with their weaknesses. Because God wants His strength to be manifested in our own lives. Now, who's worthy anyway? Many times I would say, Lord, me? I always remember Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Who? Me? Yeah. You know Scooby-Doo? I would hear myself saying that. Me, Lord? But again, when I look around, yeah. Who's worthy of it? We're all sinners. Are we saying we have a bad history? No problem, Lord. Mamamatay tao yung kalahi namin. Bakit ako? Again, let's look at the ancestors of Jesus Christ. Not only Rahab, you also have Bathsheba. And we know who Bathsheba is. Kailangan pa si Bathsheba? Siya yung nandun no, sa malakad-lakad-lakad. <laughs> Naliligo habang pinitignan siya ni David. She was married, but then gave in to David. You have Tamar, and a lot more. You can be impressed with, you know, names like Abraham. Diba? 
All of us would think Abraham is the father of our faith. He's good. You know, we have Asa, Jacob. These are great men. But then don't you know that Abraham, when they went to Egypt, he told his wife, Wag mong sabihin, asawa kita ha. Sabihin mo, kapatid lang kita. Natakot siyang patay. He was so afraid that Egyptians will kill him. And so the king thought that, yeah, this woman was his sister. So the king took the woman as his wife. None of us actually is worthy. This is how God works. We don't have any excuse to say no. I want to honor a man. Probably some of you met him. His name is Tan Tan Bilen. He's a big guy. At some point in his life, he was a very promising banker. About to be promoted as vice president in the company. But then he heard the Lord to resign from his work. And he said, what I'm going to do, Lord? I want you to be a full-time missionary. But Lord, I have a wife, I have a family, I have my daughter. But because of the early age, she had already decided to say, Yes, Lord, whatever you're going to say, my answer is yes. And so, he said yes. To cut the long story short, I thank the Lord that this man, Tantan Belen, said yes. Because if not, Tantan Belen, I would not be standing in front of him. He was my leader, he was my mentor. And I'm so happy that his answer at the time was yes. How I wish I could also do the same. Every time I would look into my life, I see a lot of deficiencies. And if we go back to history, Abraham was too old. Jeremiah was too young. Gideon was too fearful. Elijah was too ugly. Moses was too uneloquent. David was too frail. The small shepherd trying to fight against the giant. Zacchaeus was too small, short, and greedy. Mary Ann, the new rapper. <laughs> he was too sinful. We can also say to ourselves, I am too, what, fat? I am too bald. I am too shy. Uh, we can actually have a lot of reasons. We can have but, Lord, not me. Like Isaiah, when God asked, whom shall I send? We want to stand like Isaiah and said, here I am, Lord. Send me. I hope our answers will not be, here I am, Lord. Send him. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as I have said, our desire is to say, yes, Lord, whatever, whenever, however, if ever. <laughs> Let's pray to God that that will be our default answer. If God is telling you, would you want to have a relationship with me? If you, are, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord yet, if, if you hear from the Lord asking you, would you want to have a relationship with me? I hope our answer will be, yes, Lord. Would you want it now? Yes, Lord. Would you want to start a prayer time? Yes, Lord. Would you want to evangelize? Yes, Lord. Would you want to quit and live single for the Lord? Yes. And this is not a prophecy, bro. <laughs> yes, Lord. I hope that's our default. And again, I have a story to tell. A lot of times, I tell you brothers and sisters, a lot of times, every time I look at my own neighbor, people would honor me, or almost, this is not to boast, this is not to lift my own chair, to carry my own throne. <laughs> but honestly, 
it's almost a default during birthdays, during honorings. I would hear people say, Abyong has many gifts. He is a very talented man. And of course, you would feel good. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this, I know this, I know this. But you know what? I'm thankful that you know people would honor me and see me that way. And how I wish I would also see the way they would see me. My greatest dream is to see the way God would see me. Because a lot of times when I see myself, I see a lot of weakness. I see a lot of limitations. Even up until now. These things would come out. People would notice it. But I made a promise, Lord, I will not allow these weaknesses, these limitations, to hinder me from giving my all, from loving you. That's my desire, brothers and sisters. I really want to say yes, Lord, whatever, whenever, however. I was sent to a mission trip in General Santos. And uh, something happened. A woman wanted to commit suicide. I probably have mentioned this to you. To cut the long story short, hindi natuloy, hindi siya nagpakamatay. It didn't end his, her life. We became friends. She was old. She was about, not really old. She was at that time of around 40 years old. Not old, I'm 40 years old now. <laughs> but at that, at that time, I was only 20, 22 years old. And we became friends, and so we would pray together, also to support her. And then, for some reason, she received like a vision, and then she approached me and said, Abyong, ang totoy totoy mo ba? But you know what? I see you not only doing your mission here in Jensen, but I see you doing your missions throughout the world. And I can say, wow, Lord, look at me. <laughs> me? Who, <Ooh>, me? <laughs> and then you know what? A number of times I would just find myself preaching to a lot of young people in Mindanao, a lot of young people in Visayas, here in Luzon, in India, in Singapore, in the U.S., and even in Rome. And seeing different people all over the world. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for giving me that opportunity to say yes. Brothers and sisters, I'd like us to pray for one another. I'd like you to pray for me. I'd like you to pray for the person beside you. And I'd like you to pray for the person behind you. We may not be able to do it now, but let's remember to keep each other in our prayers. But we pray that our answers will always be yes. Whatever, whenever, however. Amen.